rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of the Dawson Township Board of Supervisors for March 15th, 2022. Before the start of tonight's meeting, we met in executive session and interviewed some candidates for the Veterans Advisory Committee. There will be no appointments made tonight. The first uh, item on the agenda is a presentation by Chief Logan. Chief? Or presentations, you have a couple. Yeah, we have a couple. Usually don't like to speak, but thank you. <laughs> uh, first off, I'd like to start out with uh, presenting a community service award that's a little overdue. It's not to say that it wasn't, it's extremely appreciated. I'd like to call up uh, Sergeant Jessica Whiteside. I'd like to read the, uh, the award. Whereas the mission of the Dawestown Township Police Department is to provide and perform police services in a highly professional and ethical manner in partnership with the community we serve and to whom we are accountable. This partnership is fostered in many ways, including but not limited to working with the residents and businesses regularly on crime prevention presentations, adopting other community engagement in initiatives. Whereas in August 1984, the first ever National Night Out was established, which is an annual community leader building campaign that promotes police community partnerships and neighborhood camaraderie. Whereas in the spring of 2001, excuse me, 2021, Sergeant Jessica Whiteside recognized the importance of developing a stronger community partnership with the Central Bucks community and the residents of Doylestown Township. Whereas Sergeant Jessica Whiteside coordinated 100% participation of the department's 21 sworn officers, two civilian staff members, and volunteers from the Doylestown Township administrative staff. Sergeant Whiteside also coordinated representation from her local, county, and state law enforcement agencies, fire and emergency medical services, and various vendors and businesses to promote and participate in the first ever national night out to be held in Doylestown Township. Whereas on August 30th, 2021, Sergeant w Jessica Whiteside successfully organized and hosted the first ever National Night Out in Doylestown Township, which fulfilled a commitment and desire to build a stronger community partnership with the residents. The event brought together thousands of residents for an evening of positive interaction between the police and other public safety agencies. Therefore, Sergeant Jessica Whiteside is formally recognized for her dedication to public safety her community and her continued support of the mission of the Doylestown Township Police Department and the residents of Doylestown Township this 15th day of March, getting close to retirement. <laughs> All right, next I'd, uh, moving on, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about accreditation, but first I'd like to introduce the police department. It's not often that I can get all 21 sworn officers here, wow. our two, <coughs> two civilian staff, uh, members of our victim services unit, and our crossing guard here in one night. So I'd like to introduce them, uh, and, and if I will, I'm gonna start out by squads. If I can ask your squad to stand up, I'll introduce the four of you and then you can be seated. Squad number one is Sergeant Scott Jones. Officer Matthew Hershowitz. Officer Daniel Nafflin, and Officer Brandon Siliberto. That is squad D for our uh, scheduling purposes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> next, next we have uh, Squad B, which is uh, Sergeant Jeffrey Stitch. Officer Donald Lawson. 
Officer Alex Weldy, and Officer Christopher O'Connor. Next we have Squad C, which is Sergeant Jessica Whiteside, Officer Jared Quartz, Officer Patrick Furlong, and Officer Joseph Zuccaro. <laughs> and somehow I went out of order, so Squad A, Sergeant Sean McGee, Officer Brian Maloney, Officer Timothy Reel, and Officer Daniel Carr. Next group I'd like to introduce is our detective unit. Detective Corporal Christopher Power, Detective Corey Carabello, and Detective William McCriskey. <laughs> Tonight we have with us our crossing guard, Mr. Gian Luso. Members of the Victim Services Unit, which serves multiple agencies in the Central Bucks area. I have Victim Service Unit Supervisor Liz DeYoung and Victim Service Unit uh, Member Karen Edwards. <laughs> and finally, the administrative staff consisting of Lieutenant Charles Ziegler, my Executive Assistant Holly Dodson, and Clerk Janet Casey. Since we're discussing accreditation and how we uh, pro progress through this, I have a special guest tonight, Craig Rudisell, representing Law Enforcement Agency uh, Services, who was our consultant during the accreditation process. Craig? <laughs> and I'd also like to note that retired Police Chief Stephen White is also here tonight. Hey. All right, I introduced each of you so that I could introduce you and can address you individually and thank you from the bottom of my heart publicly. I've been employed by the township for the past 35 years and I have witnessed increases in population, growth in the form of building, development, and infrastructure, along with many personnel changes throughout the various departments within the township. Those changes were gradual and did not happen overnight, but rather over a period of 35 years. You individuals have witnessed more cultural, procedural, and policy changes over the past two years than the prior 35 years combined. You've witnessed civil unrest at the national level, demonstrations at the local level, all of which have been direct, directed towards your profession, which have led to a push for police reform at every level of law enforcement, bringing about changes to today's methods of policing. I said it before, change is not easy. However, we have all learned over the past two years that it is necessary and will be constant. We've always been held accountable, but today we, are must, we must recognize that we are all held publicly accountable. It is my opinion that each of you have embraced the many changes, and I thank each of you for what you do every day. Thank you. To the board, in June of 2021, we initiated the process to seek accreditation <coughs> with hopes of receiving certification within 12 months. On February 18, 2002, I was presented with the Pennsylvania Law Enforcement Accreditation Certificate by the PA Chiefs of Police Accreditation Commission. That foundation that led to the current policies and procedures were years in the molding and would not have been possible without the entire group of officers and staff which which coordinated by Lieutenant Ziegler. And at this time, I would ask that Lieutenant Ziegler and Chairman Lyons join me to officially accept their certificate on behalf of all members of the police department and the township.
All right. One last presentation tonight, and it's the Department Commendation Award. It's going to be presented to Lieutenant Ziegler for the work that he did coordinating this accreditation process. And again, I'd like to read it. Whereas the Board of Supervisors by resolution authorized the appointment of the first sworn police officer under the laws relating to second class townships on January 1st of 1970. Whereas beginning in January of 1970 through the mid-1980s, members of the Doylestown Township Police Department operated under rules and regulations out, outlined in policies, manuals that rarely got changed, and if changed, were changed through memos and special orders. Whereas in January 1988, the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors appointed Stephen J. White as its fifth police chief, who began laying the groundwork for many of the policies and practices that became the standard across the state and in place today. Whereas in July of 2001, the Pennsylvania Chiefs of Police Association introduced the PLEA Act, or excuse me, the Pennsylvania Law Enforcement Accreditation Program to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, what's known as the PLEA Act today. Whereas between July of 2001 and June of 2021, all members of the Doylestown Township operated under a policy manual that were believed to meet the professional standards outlined in the Pennsylvania Law Enforcement Accreditation Program. Between July of 2001 and June of 2021, multiple efforts were made by the Doylestown Township Police Department to attain accreditation without success. Whereas in June of 2021, Lieutenant Charles Ziegler was named as the Doylestown Township Accreditation Manager, and after being provided with the necessary funding, tools, and support, was directed to seek and obtain accreditation within 12 months. Whereas Lieutenant Ziegler, who is a highly dedicated employee, successfully achieved PLEAC accreditation for the Doylestown Township Police Department on February 18, 2022, within seven months of his directive. Lieutenant Ziegler's success formally validates the professionalism of the department's, the department's policies, its officers, and staff. Therefore, Lieutenant Charles Ziegler is formally recognized for his dedication to public safety, continued support of the mission of the Doylestown Township Police Department, and the residents of Doylestown Township this 15th day of March 2022. And just one last thing, and this is something that I think uh, with all the people here today, and uh, it was brought to my attention tonight that uh, retired Sergeant Brian Rose has had some medical conditions, and I just wanted to wish him publicly the best. So if you guys have conversation with him, please pass that on to, uh, from the township and the police department that we're looking out for him. He's one of our uh, own and retired about five years ago. We wish him luck. Thank you. Thank you. The chief and, um, and department, we couldn't be more proud of what you've accomplished. Lieutenant Ziegler, thank you for shepherding this accreditation to the conclusion that we're so proud. So thank you very much from all of us and all the residents of Doylestown Township. We're very grateful for your work and your support and your service. Okay. Next item on the agenda um, is a proposed um, Park and Recreation Site Plan looking presentation. Judy Stern Goldstein. Chief's a little too tall. <laughs> okay, thank you. On behalf of the project team, I'm making a presentation to you tonight. With me also is Mark Havers of Pickering Courts in Somerson, who's doing the civil engineering and design for the building, and Dave Tomko and township staff have been working on this with us. So I, I'm just representing the collaborative effort. What you see on the screen is the pro proposed Park Recreation Community Center in yellow. Um, the parking fields surrounding the proposed center, the proposed parking, and the relocated courts. The courts currently exist where the proposed building is. So you would see where Dave is nicely circling for me on the left of the plan. 
two basketball courts, three tennis courts, and six pickleball courts. Currently, there are two basketball and three tennis. This plan proposes the addition of six pickleball courts um, at the recommendation of Parks and Recreation Director, Township, Park Recreation, Open Space, Comprehensive Plan that was done several years ago, and the interest of township residents. So with all of that, to replace what had been there at the pickleball courts, we need to have parking for both the community center and for the court sports. Currently, where Dave is circling the highlighter again, there are 21 angled parking spaces, and I'll show you a slide of the existing conditions in a minute. But those 21 spaces are a little problematic as they exist today. If any of you have pulled in, you kind of pull in and you think that you don't need that first space, but you drive through and suddenly you're at the end and they're gone or someone's trying to pull out and it's just very sort of dangerous in, in its condition. So we took this as an opportunity to explore adding additional parking on that side to accommodate not only the sport courts, but the entire municipal complex and make it more organized, make it more similar to the other parking fields in the township. So there are double bays of perpendicular parking and if you miss a spot, you can continue around within the parking lot. Remember that the overall roadway through the park or driveway through the park is one way. So if you came out the end on the current configuration of angled, I'm talking with my hands, I apologize. <laughs> you come out the end, you would have to circle around the whole park to come back to that space that you missed. Now you can circumnavigate through the parking lot as you can through the other lots in the township park. So we looked at this as opportunities to improve what was there while we're replacing what was needed. So now I'm gonna take you through the parking calculations. So actually, first I'm gonna show you a blow up of the court sports since you haven't seen that before. It's, it's organized, same orientation as there are now. We we collectively have shifted things around a little just so they fit better in the space. The existing exercise area on the top right of the plan where Dave is circling will remain. The existing bocce courts can remain, the existing pavilion can remain. So we're disturbing a, a, the majority of field one, but those other elements can remain without unnecessary construction and disruption. Next slide, please. So this is the existing condition in the park right now. You can see the angled parking that I was talking about. The field, the big open field known as field one is where the court sports will be. And if you could just show us where the court sports are now in the middle, that is where the proposed park recreation community center will be. Currently there are, in my memo I've outlined the existing parking. Currently there are 88 parking spaces total in, in that full area. The 24, 20, 21, and 22. Our township code has parking requirements in it. This proposed use is part of the C-15 municipal complex. We're in the municipal overlay district. The municipal complex incorporates the entirety of Central Park, which includes the park, this municipal building, public works, police, the whole shebang. The parking requirement for that is two seats in the meeting room, in, in the public meeting areas, plus one per employee. When we do this throughout the entire site, we have plenty of parking on the site. And if you've read through the, the memo, you have all the statistics there. I think I don't need to bore the public with all of those statistics. But we have sufficient parking on the site to meet our code. But meeting the code and meeting the practical needs of the building as it's fully being used are two separate and distinct things. So we've endeavored to put as much parking as practical to meet the needs without putting excess parking. It's a balance. I mean, I was once a member of the EAC years ago. The EAC is gonna say, we don't want any more paving than we need. Township engineer and engineers are gonna say, the more paving you have, the more stormwater you need, that's more expense, the whole bit. So we, we struck a balance. 
what you see in the plan was 291 spaces, which is an addition of whoops, 208 spaces, I think, was the total, or 203 spaces was the, the, new, the new amount to serve essentially the, the building in addition to what we have today. That, in a nutshell, is what we have. My only warnings or words of wisdom at the end of the conclusion, if you read the memo, are that it's physically impossible to park adequately on the site if all of the elements on this property, the collective large property, were being used to their fullest extent at the same time. Right now, we do that. We have staff that works very diligently to make sure that if there's a major event in the park, the other elements are shut down or not leased. We'll need to continue to do that. You could not have an event such as a full packed meeting room here, an event in the gymnasium of the Park Rec Center, and all four of the other public gathering spaces with people in seats and rows, meeting the total full occupancy of the park, and a concert in the park, people playing on sports fields. You wouldn't do that to start with. There's no reason to think that you would. So I believe that the parking that we're proposing is adequate, sufficient, and is the best compromise for the park. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. Any questions from the board? We appreciate the update. I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, thank sure. you. I thought there were five tennis courts and we went down to three. Is that correct, right, on the current? Currently, I think we have five tennis courts. Let's look at the existing. <clears throat> right? Isn't that five? It's it's three tennis courts and two basketball, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm squinting from here. Uh, I no. think the two. Am I wrong on that? Can I can I interject if I might? Yeah. It is it is five tennis courts. Ah. Um, it, with two basketball. And what so I'm circling right here is the existing trailers. That's that the trailer, right? The basketball okay. courts right okay. now. So the courts are out of service. There's two tennis in the back, uh, and there's three tennis in the front here. The proof that I can't squint and see at the same time. Okay. <laughs> The, the plan was before the park and rec community center was going to go on the site was that these courts were going to be resurfaced, rehabilitated, and what we were going to do was two basketball courts were going to remain, there were going to be three tennis, and these were going to be converted to pickleball, six pickleball. Um, due to the magnitude of the project right now to move the courts to field, um, to field one, um, and our estimate right now, we we came up with this concept of just replacing what we have in kind, and so three three tennis, six pickleball, two basketball. And the reason I ask is um, twofold. When I look at the pros plan, both our um, dog um, programs and our tennis programs were our most um, robust. Um, now we're moving to pickleball. I didn't know if there was a matrix used was. I mean, cost analysis, there's a Doylestown pickleball, Karen might be able to answer, there. they have 12 courts over at Camp Curiosity on Landisville, plus another six courts that are indoor. So are we competing? <coughs> you know, it's a lot of money, obviously, to move courts, and I know you're doing a lot. This is just the time to ask the question. I wasn't aware that we were planning to put six courts in and we're taking tennis courts out. So I was just Karen's trying to understand and that. I believe she's probably going to say the current tennis courts have blurred lines. They actually are used as pickleball. They, I think they were doubled. That was the last conversation I think Karen and I've yes, had. Yes, we have blended lines on the courts right now, and it does create a little conflict over if I want to play tennis, I want to play pickleball. Um, let me start by saying pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the country bar none. Um, I have had lengthy conversations with uh, tennis professionals, um, at the UST level, USTA level, I've had lengthy conversations with folks from the United States Pickleball Association and um, at, over at Camp Curiosity that is primarily now um, leaning towards, while they do have some beginner play, uh, they are, that's where the more competitive players play and the more social players are the ones struggling to find a place to play under a park and recreation component. We could help accommodate that without competing and, in fact, possibly being a feeder program when people go to those elevated levels. Would, would you consider having tennis courts with the lines on them? 
because like I said, uh, we do You grow that. into some difficulty with you, if you want to have folks come in, if you want to do tournaments, if you um, want to have any type of league play, you will be in conflict with USTA and the ability to do that. You cannot have tournaments on those courts um, that fall under the compliance with them with pickleball lines on them. Um, I think we are doing um, a great service to our community by adding this. I get calls probably almost daily looking for the pickleball. We've done an excellent job of managing the shifting back and forth, but it takes courts th with that have the lines on them and makes them dedicated so people can play on the spaces that they want to play on. Yeah, I, I guess I was thinking, would it be possible to leave the five tennis courts and maybe put the pickleball courts at another park? I know. The uh, park and rec often talks about enhancing other parks. We've already approved this. But I, I, we've this already, is my first we've time already I'm seeing this. I think we've we already, already approved, approved this. this. Yeah, this concept. has been out there for quite a while. This has been out there for several years, actually. Um, I, I would recommend exactly what we have. This is this is my, what I feel professionally is is the best recommendation that we can put forward today. Thank you, Karen. All right. Anything else? I have a question for Judy. I know as a former EAC member um, and chair, right? Was no, I was chair? never no, chair, okay, no. And, and someone who is, um, goes to the planning commission meetings and um, advises us. We've had a lot of discussion about using pervious surfaces for parking lots. Is that something that we can do as an environmental, um, to, to help with our environmental initiatives? Pervious parking or pervious, pervious paving on parking lots is something that is preferred many times, but it's usually preferred in just the parking spaces, not the drive aisle, because the drive aisle has more of the movement and in and out. In a high intensity use area such as this, with tires turning constantly on it, my fear is that the, the pores and the pores paving would then become clogged and wouldn't work as they're supposed to. So they're, they're great in areas, um, the office building where I am now, on the whole back 40, if you will, the spaces themselves are porous paving and the drive aisle is, is regular paving because they aren't used. People come in, park all day, and then leave. These would be in and out, and I just fear that they wouldn't, wouldn't work. But that's only something that we look at. And I know that Mark, I'm gonna take the words out of his mouth, is going to be looking at stormwater management, BMPs, and innovative solutions throughout the entire site. Right, Mark? Yeah. Right. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, nice presentation. Thanks, Judy. Thank you. Thank you, team, Judy. All right, um, next item is the proposed road program. Yeah, I think if Dave, while well, Dave tees up um, some of the information related to that. Uh, the board will recall in our budget work session discussions last fall, we talked about being able to do more road work. And uh, we followed with the Ways and Means Committee, our budget analyst, finance department, our public works, to further vet the concept of how we could do more roads. As the board knows, typically we average around three miles a year. Um, fortunately, last year we did quite a bit more. But as we move forward, um, we're getting more and more as our infrastructure is aging, we're getting more requests for service in that area. Um, as the information we provided to the board uh, shows, there are other municipalities that are looking at options of borrowing and doing what I think, and I want to give credit where credit is due, one of the supervisors said to do a road surge. And I think what we've kind of put together here is the opportunity <laughs> to consider doing that road surge. Um, and at this time, I'm going to uh, have Dave and Sean walk us through some of the information, and Ed um, Ebenbach, our budget analyst, will also assist in presentation um, on this matter. If the board will allow me, I'm gonna step back to a presentation that we gave um, to the board back in um, June of 2021 at the budget work session to talk about our roads, our roads, uh, uh, conditions survey that we did in 2018, what that data includes, um, and then looking at some of the numbers, and then as we roll through what, what we're proposing here. So this is our 2018 road analysis, as you can see again for, you know, the board has seen this, so please uh, forgive me, we have a lar large number of uh, folks in the audience who are interested in the road program, so I wanna show this. Um, 
we basically contracted with a company that did a, <clears throat> a uh, what's called robotics. They did a, uh, uh, an AI road survey and they basically uh, photographed all the roads and categorized the roads and basically categorized them from one being the best, being five, being the worst condition. So again, if you'll think about it, one or number one was best. <clears throat> That's how this is, how this, um, this slide uh, shown here. And basically what is very interesting about this is that, as you can see down here, um, a third, about 35% is, you know, one, which is good. You have kind of this bottom third here um, that is, um, you know, average. And then you've got this lying out here, these, the red, the orange, and the uh, yellow here, you know, in the bottom half that really needs attention. And that's represented over here graphically. Now, what's occurred since 2018 is we've done a number of paving projects and a lot of work up in here in, in the, um, the, uh, the ridings. No, not the ridings, I'm sorry. Um, Windsong Ridge, uh, we've paved up there, so that should be all green and nice when we do our next survey here. Coming up this year, we've done uh, paving down here, and obviously we've done work in the Pebble Ridge Woodridge area with the sewer project. But you can see the, uh, the, the breakdown across the township, and you can really see the concentrated areas where work needs to be done. One big area is over here. Um, in, in these areas. And this really is how, when we had a lot of development, roads were done, and we unfortunately are suffering from lack of maintenance. And deferred maintenance means more cost in the future, and here we are. So again, for the, the audience, um, this, is, this is what uh, we showed. Um, I wanna jump backwards a little bit, and I'll, I'll come back to this slide. This is kind of historically what we've done. So really from 2018, you could see the breakdown of basically the number of miles that we've paved, what kind of program we called it, we called our regular road maintenance, and then how much we spent um, and what was budgeted. Um, some of this data we didn't have, so I just plugged in what we had. But what's important is coming down here into the blue box, uh, what was done last year, you can see the past couple years since 2019, the, what was done in Pebble Ridge Woodridge as far as base repair because of the sewer work. They do a lot of base repair on the roads because of the trench and just conditions of the roads the wearing course work that was done, and then also the curbing that was done, and you can see, you know, obviously the spending plan uh, that was budgeted and actuals. So what's interesting about this, you can see is one mile, one and a half, two, and obviously coming down here, you're seeing an increase, four, three, and then as we move forward, we're trying to do more. Um, we have always, folks ask me when they call, what do we need to do? It's, it's budget. We need and it's budget. It's always the dollars and cents of it, and and as the economy ebbs and flows, so does the amount of road work we can do. So, um, going forward, when we talked to you and showed you this in in 2021, we broke down uh, our road program into a five-year plan, and then a uh, six to ten-year plan. So 22 to 25. Now, basically, these are the areas again um, that we received comments and concerns about for the residents. And I think if you remember the board said, you know, we, the board said we need to start to come up with a plan to address these concerns. Um, these colors, the purple here is actually these roads in this, um, in this part program, part A for 22 to, through 25. Um, you can see that it totals about seven, and a half, seven miles and it's a $1.5 million uh, total cost at the time when we put it together on the budget those costs have probably gone up, obviously, and the cost per mile is $220,000. So it's not cheap to pave roads. It costs money. Um, and it's, I think, also good for the residents to see and be educated. So that's part A. Here was part B of the, the 22 to 25 road program, which is now all the, what I'll call blue, uh, blue areas um, that we identified. And we try to rank them by severity um, so obviously doing the worst ones first. Um, there's kind of a really rhyme or reason. We just kind of listed them alphabetically, but these are the roads, some of the areas. Now we've done some paving up here on Cumber Ridge Lane, Iron Hill Road. Um, so we've done some work there. And obviously again, the green uh, for Pebble Ridge Woodridge. So that was the 22 to 25 plan. Then we come in here and we look out now the 26 to 31, and we look at all the other areas, which are some of the, um, the, the outliers. Um, and there's the roads that are listed there. So that's kind of what we looked at as far as our plan's concerned, okay? Hang on one second. Yep. So long, everybody. Thank you. Just let them leave so we... <laughs> okay. 
Okay, thanks. I apologize. I'm going to take a step back here and go to the 22 to 25 Part B and indicate 7.18 miles, so 7.2 miles at a cost of $1.7 million, $238,000 per mile, okay? Um, going through this program now, 26 to 31, all the roads, looked at the cost, that total 16.6 .6 miles, cost of $4.4 million, cost of 247 per mile, okay? So if we're looking at trying to address those areas, this now summarizes all that. You can see road program A and B from 22 to 25, total 14 miles, you're looking at uh, two, 3.2 million, okay? And the cost per mile, it changes because I mean, we're just taking the cost and dividing it by the number of miles. That's where we're getting the cost per mile. Really, there's no real science to it. It's just kind of a marker. Um, the road program from 26 to 31 is 16.6 .6 miles at a cost of four million, all in 33 miles. So basically doing this kind of third of the township at 30 miles, $7.3 million at a cost of about 238 per mile. So we had a 10 year program laid out based on our spending plan, our five year plan, and then, a, and then, then an estimated kind of five years after that, taking us out to 2031. And we're seeing that it's gonna take 10 years to get done 30 miles. We have 77 miles and I always equate this to painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You start on one side, you get to the end, you're not done, you gotta go back and start again on the other side and keep going. So as you improve something, it starts to deteriorate and you just start over. So we're in this cycle of we're never getting kind of over the hump. So as we kind of talked about this program with ways and means, the, the topic came up as, well, what if we kind of compressed that road program and tried to do more sooner, um, try to take advantage of some cheap money from what we we're looking at in 2021. And so we developed this program with Sean and, and Panoni, our, our, our municipal engineering consultant firm, and looked at this and said, okay, and then basically developed a spending plan, which um, we showed to the Ways and Means. Um, and Ed, uh, our budget analyst, has basically laid out kind of where we're at um, on the existing uh, financial plan in the model that we use for our budgeting. And then what kind of the proposal is for borrowing to compress that. So I'm gonna let Ed. This, this, is, this is a lot to, to absorb. It is, and, and I think what- when And I would like to do this in, during the budget meetings. That, that would be our plan. Our plan is to kind of give you this to, there's a number of supervisors have seen this plan. Um, then is to give this to you, let, and again, let the residents hear this, um, and then talk about it more at, at the next, at the first budget work session in April. And refine it, talk about if we're going to borrow, what are those types of proposals? Um, Ed, do you want to just put a few minutes on this and then we'll, yeah. move, on, we'll move on to the rest right. of the agenda? Right. The, um, the analysis that st has to start with what do we have in the plan right now? We do have some discrepancies between what Dave has just told you and what I've got up here on the screen. But I started by looking at for the first five years, the budget process we just went through for 22 through 23, 24, 25, 26, what, what we have in for dollars. And that basically boils down to a revenue stream of a million dollars a year comprised of pieces from state liquid fuel and pieces from a road tax. They are not exclusively used for just roads maintenance. There's bridges maintenance, there's uh, storm, there's uh, ice and snow removal, there's all kinds of other things in there. But what we have allocated in the plan here is a million dollars a year for road maintenance. We spend a million dollars a year. And then down at the bottom of this first page, we make an assumption on cost. That number in the right box, in the red box, is 241,000. It's in the same general region as what, what Dave has just told you. But on this one, we put an assumption on that said it was gonna grow 2% a year. So, because we do think costs are gonna go up. So I've simply blown it out for the five years of the budget, five years beyond that at a million dollars a year. And what that tells us is that if we stick with this slightly different than Dave, we get to about 37 miles after 10 years. So, and after five years, we're only at 19. 
And if you think of the 75 miles of township roads, well, that's a pretty minor percentage of the total that we've hit in that time frame. So if you turn to the next page of the model, this accelerated program has us doing 32 miles in the next three years. So we have 32 miles that we were going to get to uh, seven or eight years instead, we're doing it in three. And then we run at a slightly lower rate for the years that follow. The way we do it is to take the revenue stream that's devoted to roads from state liquid fuel and from the road tax. We use it in part to pay for the road maintenance, but then we go and borrow money to get a, a much bigger piece. So for example, in the 2023 column, we're going to do uh, 10 miles of road. We borrow something like $1.6 million. We add debt service that we have to pay, so we have capitalized interest that we also borrow. So we create a debt stream over the next three years, which we will then be paying off for the next 25. So we'll be paying for this road surge over the kind of the useful life of the roads. What that leaves us at the end, and the trick in this whole thing, is that when we're done, the amount of debt service we've taken on doesn't consume the revenue stream for roads that we've already established. So at a million dollars a year, we end up with a, with a, a debt service stream of about $300,000, $330,000 a year, leaving six seventy seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 for road maintenance. Not as much as we do today, but nevertheless still a, a decent amount. And that particular approach enables us to do 49 miles in 10 years instead of the 30, instead of the uh, 37 miles. 49 instead of 37, and after three years we've done 32 instead of 15. We do this by fitting the debt service within the existing revenue stream, so there's no tax increase involved in doing it because we will be paying for this for the next 25 years. We're gonna pay, in this instance, for roads over the useful life of the road as opposed to paying for it all up front. That's the basis of it. Understood, thank you, that's good work. Any questions from the board? Any questions? I have questions, but I'm gonna save them for the budget. Yeah, I was show. gonna say, I feel like we'll we're going to dive be in deeper at the budget workshop. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing this at the budget meeting, so that's we'll fine. save our questions Thank for then. Save question for from them? the audience. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Come on up to the. Can you get to the podium? Oh, can you move that mic down, Ed? I can't move it on that side. Let me. We're going to get the wireless, wireless microphone. Mic. Get a wireless microphone. We're going to get a wireless mic. We can use. One second. Yep. Oh, no, no, questions are allowed. Any questions regarding the program that we're allowed right now, please feel free. I would like to make a comment about the roads program. Just watching the faces in the audience <laughs> and some of the big smiles that I saw was, was a beautiful thing. And I'm really <laughs> happy that, 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 that this will make somebody, uh, somebody's li life a little easier especially with our uh, cars getting destroyed on some of those potholes. They're bringing the they're bringing wireless. wireless. No, they're they're bringing, you. Chief, they're bringing the wireless. We got it right here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Hello. My name is Charlo Lipless. I'm 11 years old and I live on Lenape Lane in, in the Pebblewoods neighborhood. I'm here to ask you to please fix our neighborhood roads the right way. I have had to stay home for most of the last two years for my, for my health, and I can't play in the grass because my wheelchair doesn't work in the grass. I like to wheel around my neighborhood to get out and see my friends. The, the roads are big and wide, but they are terrible. So, so many potholes and patches. The, the, they both flip my chair a lot, and it really hurts. Aww. Our roads are not safe for me. Please fix them. The patches just make me flip even more. I just want 
to go around the neighborhood like a normal kid. Can you please help? Thank you for listening. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. We're on it. Thank you. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Take notes. Got that. I saw the hands. Any other comments about the road program? Okay. All right. Any anything else from the supervisors about the road program? All right. This, right. Do you have a question about the roads program? Is this for the roads program? Yes. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Janine Ford, and I live on Briarwood Court, 18901. Firstly, I would like to thank you all for your time and consideration in paving our increasingly decaying roadway throughout our 16 resident cul-de-sac. I understand we were once on the list from the roads department to have our roads rectified from Mr. Tomko, <clears throat> but due to the limitations of the funds allowed, allotted, it never happened. My small neighborhood does not have sidewalks and is very minimally lit. Therefore, we residents are forced to walk on our street. It is especially dangerous at night with all the patching and potholes as well when we are out walking our pets or grandkids due to the terrible conditions. We are aware that the committee has to prioritize the roads in most needs of repairs, but we just wanted to also bring ours back to the attention of the board respectfully. Our neighborhood is something that I am very proud of, and I hope to keep up with the integrity of safe travels. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments about the road program? Okay. Well, that's it for our presentations. Next item is uh, visitors and public comment. Do we have any visitors and public comment, Chief? I mean, former Chief? <laughs> Steve White, always Chief. Once a Chief, always a Chief. Well, re not, uh, graciously retired. I feel very good about that. Uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Logan uh, took the time to acknowledge, or Chief Logan took the time to acknowledge that. <laughs> he was my lieutenant, I'm sorry. He's 10 years, it goes by and you don't even, you don't even realize it. He's Chief Dean Logan. He's still my boss unless I'm at home. <laughs> Chief Dean Logan did an outstanding job of recognizing Lieutenant Chuck Ziegler and all those responsible for developing the, the accreditation process. But this didn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, more than five years ago when you were developing the new police station, uh, Chief Logan and the Board of Supervisors both thought well forward uh, to what they needed to be able to qualify for the accreditation. So I, for one, uh, would, would like to thank and acknowledge the great work that uh, Dean Logan has done, and uh, especially in this day and age in law enforcement in the United States, uh, Dean has done an outstanding job with his officers, with the police department, with the building, and with the support of the Board of Supervisors. So thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge Dean for an outstanding job well done. Thank you. Take the podium. Yep, Ken. Sure. Ken Snyder, 50 Foxcroft Drive, Doylestown. I also wanted to congratulate the board and the chief for uh, receiving this accreditation. I know this is something that you guys have worked on for many years. It took a lot of work, it took a lot of effort and it's something that is, you should be extremely, extremely proud of. So congratulations, Chief, and to the entire, even though they left, <laughs> to everybody else, you guys have worked your butts off to get here, and it's a huge, huge accomplishment. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Podium. Good evening. I'm a little unaccustomed to public speaking, although the school board would probably say otherwise. 
long before many of the people in this Excuse room me. were even born. Could you please identify yourself? Yes, ma'am. Your Petter Cox. Many people call me Pete, call me Petter. Some people call me Mr. However, like my father, my grandfather, my nephew, my brother, and myself, the official title is Colonel. And 50 years ago, I swore an oath to this nation to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And right now, this board is involved in a violation of the Constitution of the United States. As you chastise, threaten, and swear to get rid of a member of the Board of Supervisors because she exercised her right of freedom of speech. Did she do it in a manner in which you like? Obviously not. Did she exercise her freedom of speech? Absolutely. Has it been misconstrued, twisted, and taken in multiple different directions? Yes, it has. Maybe instead of being worried about one little flyer, this board should be more worried about things going on, oh, I don't know, in the Central Bucks School District where there's a teacher that students have known for a very long time was a pedophile, where there's librarians putting pornographic books on the bookshelves, which is a violation of the law. Yeah, she made a mistake, maybe by the way she distributed it, but she exercised her right of freedom of speech. If you don't want her on the board, don't demand her resignation. Don't stab her in the back. Meet her face to face and do a recall like they did in California, like they've done all over this country. But don't be a bunch of vicious, backstabbing, vitriolic idiots. <laughs> Exercise your right under the Constitution as she did. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Judy Dixon, I'm in Doylestown Township, and I wanna thank the board, uh, the Township Supervisors for everything that you do, and the, the officers that were here, we appreciate your service, and we know it can be trying at times. And we know that you base your information on facts, and facts matter, because if you get the facts wrong, then you get the conclusions wrong, right? So whether you're putting a budget together, or a spreadsheet together, if you have the numbers wrong, if you have the information wrong, you don't, you don't get the right conclusion. So maybe people that are here tonight have, don't have all the information about that flyer that came out that Nancy did put into the school district mailboxes. And if you go to the Bucks County Courier Times or the Intelligencer, they actually did an editorial where they fact-checked the information that was put into this flyer. And the flyer was either complete, it's com factually wrong or misrepresented. It was, <laughs> so there's three parts to the inaccuracies that was put together in this flyer. And uh, Nancy, I don't know if you put the flyer together or you just distributed it because it wasn't said, but you haven't backed down to the facts that it was correct. But it is incorrect in three ways. The first part is that it basically says that Bill Santa Vista was the president of PSERS. And at the time, PSERS was embroiled in controversy over funds, pension funds. Bill Santa Vista was never involved with PSERS, okay? It was misrepresented in the flyer that was put out. And if you f it was fact-checked by the intelligencer. So again, if you go to the February 25th intelligencer, you can check the facts because they did fact check it. That was the first inaccuracy. The second inaccuracy is to claim that Santa Vista is, quote, trying to replace you based on the color of your skin and the community. It's in the flyer that was put out. It is, again, incorrect. That was the, not the purpose of the meeting. There was a July 28th meeting at the Doylestown Borough Human Relations Committee. Meeting, the meeting minutes do say that Bill Santa Vistas did attend. However, there is no quote 
of any roles being replaced. No one was asked to have their role replaced with people of color. The flyer actually says, why is he, meaning Bill Santa Vista, trying to replace you based on the color of your skin and divide your community? Replace you, that's, <laughs> that's a uh, Nazi uh, word, replace you, right? Wasn't that what they said at Charleston? Jews are trying to replace you? I'm sorry, it's, that's why so many people do have a problem with it. And the third and the final, and I will conclude, is that there is a, basically a, um, a collage of different images from the LGBT rainbow room, and then interspersed in there is a flyer about the Central Buck School District and Bill Santa S S S I'm sorry, Bill Anavitis. Yes, thank you. And it's mentioned in there. It has nothing to do with the Rainbow Room or the LGBT community. It was simply a support program that school board members showed up for and Bill showed up for, and it's interspersed into that collage. Again, it implies that he was part of this Rainbow Room. So that is why we do have a problem with it, and I appreciate that the township supervisors realize that it's a problem. And if members of the community do not realize that if you don't get your facts right, you can't get to the right conclusions, please fact check your information. And I'm happy to share the flyer that was distributed, uh, that Nancy did distribute, and just in case you didn't read it for yourself. Thank you. I'm uh, Jay Callahan, Doolstown. And thank you very much for being there and doing what you do and letting me speak tonight. I, I'm super upset, like really upset. I actually emailed you all about a week and a half ago. And um, I regretfully said, like, you know, the teacher, Joseph Fort, we know about one victim. It's probably not going to be the only one. Because that's just the way it goes. You know, I'm 53 years old, and that's what happens. Sadly, to report, there's three of them now. So the colonel wasn't incorrect. Fact checking that flyer, I, I saw a picture of little kids putting condoms on uh, prosthetic penises. I, I don't know what that was for or what that was about, but that upset me. So that's why I'm here. And why I'm here, like, you know, we don't talk about the content at all. I left the Catholic Church because of what the priests were doing to the kids. Actually, no, I left because of the cover-up and because of the silence in the house of the Lord. I couldn't tolerate it. I couldn't be a part of it, so I left it. And then I remembered just today, it was awful, uh, Second Mile, right here in Pennsylvania. That organization helped hundreds of thousands of kids a year, hundreds of thousands of kids. There'll be plenty of wonderful stories that people say, man, they really helped me, and it's awesome, and, I, and, I, and I'm glad those kids were helped. But then there's Jerry Zandusky, right? We, we can't ignore that. That's a hundred, hundreds of hundreds of kids. Why were they hurt? Because people kept their mouths shut, and people in charge that knew stuff didn't do anything about it. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong anywhere. But I'm saying, why are we silent about it? Why aren't we talking about it? Because I'm not going to send my kid into a rectory. I'm not going to send my kids a second mile. And I'm not sending my kids in a rainbow room. That's my prerogative as a parent. And honestly, I don't know anything about it without this what happened. So I want to thank, uh, I can't say it, this, this person for putting that out there. And you all, talk, you know, it only was talked about here in this meeting. And nobody responded to my email. I asked serious questions. What are we doing about looking into anything? If everything's great, everything's great. No problem. But I don't know, and I don't think questioning is wrong. And certainly questioning isn't anti-LGBTQ at all. It's a question about protecting kids. We're circling our wagons around institutions, and we're not circling our wagons around kids. And I think we can change that. It's up to us. Thank you. Hi, thank you, board, for letting us speak. Uh, my name is Sue Gallo. I don't live in the district, but I do work for the Central Bucks School District. I've worked um, for the district for about 20 years. Um, I live in Lumberville, but I grew up here. My kids went to uh, Buckingham, Holly Kong, and East. Um, I've known Nancy Santa Cecilia for about 20 years now when our older kids went to preschool at Small Wonders. 
in Doylestown. We've raised our kids together. We've become very good friends. My one son has played lacrosse with her son since they were little. That now they're in the same fraternity at Penn State. Um, we attend each other's birthday parties, graduation parties. If we lose a, ma a family member, we attend each other's funerals. We're very good friends, and I'm, I'm saying these examples to illustrate how well I know Nancy, and I really love her. I've spent untold hours with her one-on-one, -on -one, at girls' nights, hours at lacrosse tournaments. I've never, in these 20 years, heard her say anything remotely um, disparaging. Um, I, I'll use the word Nazi because I am seeing these reviews in, in newspapers calling for her resignation, racist, homophobic. I have never heard her say anything close that would have anyone bring those terms up in accordance with her name. She is a good person. She would give you the shirt off her back. Um, I know that uh, for a couple months now, people have been calling for a resignation, and I almost feel it akin to sharks circling in the water when they smell blood. I know that um, another uh, member of the school board was chased out of his position, one of the few conservative voices. Um, it took death threats. It took harassment in the workplace. Um, but he's gone. So, you know, I guess uh, people are will not stop. Um, but anyway, I, I digress. I really just wanted to say Nancy is an amazing and wonderful and kind human being. Um, I, I know people make mistakes. I, I, I don't think she deserves this. She's a good person. Hi, Donna Shannon, uh, 103 Steeplechase Drive, and I'm going to switch gears here. Um, I came to the last uh, meeting and saw what I'm thinking um, is just a rendering and a proposal for a rec center. Um, I had said that I do have an architecture degree even though I'm not practicing. And um, I did uh, have a two hour long meeting with a friend of mine who is an architect. Um, I showed him the pictures that I took. It, it, it's kind of hard, I'm not sure that there's anywhere that I can get all the pictures that we had up on the screen, but I showed them what um, I was able to take pictures of, and uh, I have to first say that I love geothermal. I think it's a wonderful way to transfer heat. Um, but as, as I talked to the architect, they told me that in our area, geothermal is not really that um, efficient. Um, he also said uh, that when we look at the solar panels that we need to make sure that the operating costs, because solar panels conduct heat, so in the summer months when you've got solar panels like on a thin roof that is more than likely going to be on a prefab building that basically um, looks like a storage unit, in lack of a better word, um, that's one thing, that they're basically called butler-type buildings. Um, the two areas of the building have peaks that make an M, and that's just not done in architecture at all because the rain goes into that V and um, snow and ice. So there's a lot of concerns there. Um, uh, there were no measurements on that, so I, I guess, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I is there something more substantial that I could, you know, critique or question? Because, you know, there's also the concern that there is the YMCA, which I'm sure is down in membership, and we'd be competing with them. I mean, by the time something like this gets built, um, you know, I, I don't know if this is a question and answer section, but those renderings also didn't show sprinkler systems, like all of, you know, the nuts and bolts that you see in here. You know, there's 
there's no room for um, the, the HVAC unit and the plumbing and the hot water heater and all that stuff as well. It just looked to me that it wasn't big enough. Okay. Um, if you want to, we're, we're, it's really, we're not it's into that kind in of progress. detail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we're, we're not that kind of detail at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and we have an architect to sort out all those details on a plan. Mm -hmm. um, what you saw, as, as you well point out, was a rendering. Mm -hmm. um, and the rendering included what rooms are going to be where, where the kitchen was going to be, where the, you know, it's, there was some detail, but not a lot of detail that you would have, um, you know, to, to be able to, 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 to digest. So, mm -hmm. um, Could I also ask, though, is it something that is going to be free to the public, or are there going to be uh, costs incurred by the public to use yeah. it? There's, there's going to be um, people who use it for residents and things are going to be free. Programs today in, in Thorstown Township um, have, have a cost. So whatever programs have a cost now, um, leagues always get charged. So mm -hmm. there are some costs, but um, if you're a non-resident, you pay more than a resident for right, these programs. Right. So, and that's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hello, everybody. I won't take more than a few minutes, but listening to the comments tonight about the supervisor, <coughs> excuse me. Please identify yourself. Sorry about that. Uh, I know who I am. No, uh, tell myself that every day. Marty Gillen, I'm a resident of Doyle Sound uh, Township, been a resident for 21 years, and I've never seen such acrimony in the whole 21 years that I've been living here as I see now amongst various groups. Gentleman made a comment about if you really want to pursue having this supervisor, who I refuse to name, having this supervisor resign or be removed, have a recall. Well, our wonderful state government, state legislature makes that virtually impossible. The governor actually has to sign off on it. But we have some history in this township, in this area, the borough. I believe it was Margaret Mead that said, never underestimate the power of what a small group of people can do. And I propose, and I'm gonna get involved, that we go to the people with this problem, that we get something started that shows that the people of this township do not want this person on the Board of Supervisors anymore. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Excuse me, not you, that gentleman in the back. You, yeah. Hi, my name's Ted Williamson. I'm a resident of the township. Uh, Dave, I wondered if your uh, paving estimates were done. Uh, it involves asphalt, which is more than half oil. And in the last 11 months, oil is more than doubled in price. Yeah, those, uh, so the estimates we show were, were developed in 2016. Um, and we know that as we move forward, and, and Sean uh, Torpy, our, our township engineer, is involved in, in our road, preparing our road program. Um, we actually have a bid out uh, right now on the street for our 2022 road program, and we're looking at historical data because we're seeing that, that trend upward. We know that. We know things are moving. Actually, as we did our program in 21, we had three different contracts we were let. We saw each continuous one go up by, uh, by you know, some some percentage, so we're watching those prices, and, and if, it's, if it falls that it's you know, outside potentially our budget, or we're gonna have to try to determine what we're gonna do. So we are looking at historical data, and also looking at our budget, and, and then we present that data to the Board of Supervisors for approval or, and as a recommendation. If it doubles again, no one will be able to afford to ride on those, on those roads. Correct, unfortunately. Uh, in, in support of uh, Nancy, I would just ask the board if they're prepared to please publish a list of the protected groups and places and organizations that cannot be criticized in any way and that require immediate resignation. I put it to you. Perhaps you could answer that later uh, when you had a chance to think it over.
Um, Ed, do you have anything new to say? You spoke at length the last time. Okay, two minutes max. Two, two minutes max. Well, you're not a resident of Doylestown Township, are you? Yes, I am. Are you? From Buckingham. Buckingham Township. Buckingham Township. <laughs> and, and Perlone. So I, I should have the same right to speak as anyone else. Just two but minutes, OK? And you spoke a long time last time. Well. Let's, let's be respectful of everybody well, else in the this room. This time I got a chance to look at the material from Nancy. And the comments about the Rainbow Room, it says it uh, educates children from 14 to 21, and then from 12 to 13, once a month with parent approval. I think parents may want to uh, know if their children are going to the Rainbow Room. And maybe, I think it, they say about suicides, I think suicides come when the parents and children can't get together. And I, I think this Rainbow Room should operate so that, so that it shows cooperation with the parents and what they're doing. And then in, on the criticism of, of the uh, Bill Senevitas, the union president. Uh, there's uh, the thing about the, uh, Paul Martino spoke at the Central Bell School Board after a, a couple months investigation. He found that the teachers union paid, provided $9,000 for each of the candidates and the people in the district voted Republican candidates in three more than the Democrats and that they claimed that he was putting a lot more money, but the teachers union spent 30% more money on the Democratic candidates. And this is a conflict of interest because the teachers union uh, and the school board, they approved the salaries for the teachers and everything. So they, they were not up front. So this flyer identifies that there is a conflict of interest between what the school board, uh, the teachers union and the school board is going. So I think also, the flyer gave everyone a chance to talk about the different issues. And I think that was very helpful. People need to know about all these things. And I don't think suppressing it and calling people's name is the way to resolve problems. And I think teachers are adults. 54 teachers got this flyer, and they're adults. And they should have the right ability to, to present things in a non-biased way. So I think this is a constructive flyer, and everyone should be thankful for it, because we got to hear from from uh, these different groups and all that we wouldn't necessarily hear from. The okay. Central Bell School District, you had to be in the area. Ed, your two minutes is up. Okay, well, thank, thank you. you for your, having your Thank you for respecting our time. Thank you. Any other comments? Right. In the back. There's a couple. Why don't you just line up, Who wants, whoever wants to talk. Steve Sullivan. Uh, I don't live in Dulles on Chad, I live in Dulles on Borough, but I had no intention to speak until I heard some misinformation about 30 seconds ago. Uh, I just want to say that the school board members that Mr. Mackhouse was talking about did not receive a single dime from the teachers union because that would be illegal. PACE, which is the PAC for educator, educators, is a voluntarily donated PAC that educators publicly donate to and it's completely voluntary, separate from union dues. Also, the total amount that came from PACE was about $29,000 in cash versus $70,000 that came from Mr. Martino. So to say that the union donated more than Mr. Martino is not true. There was also about a $10,000 postcard campaign that the teachers did separately, unbeknownst to the candidates. That was an in-kind donation. Still coming to way less. So those uh, assertions are false. Also, none of that money, mo actually most of that money, about 90% of it, didn't come until the middle of October. At that point, the PAC that supported their opposition by the, per the claimant about these misinformation had already donated the 70,000. So the idea that, the idea that that person was leveling the playing field against the union is false. The, the union never donated any money because again, that, that would be a FEC violation. So if he wants to assert an FEC violation, then he should go ahead and do that rather than spreading misinformation. Also, I would like to say that it was 
the educators who have a First Amendment right to donate to political campaigns, according to the Supreme Court under Citizens United, just like everybody else does. So to, uh, to suppress their First Amendment rights and saying that the board members they elected can't participate in procedures is, is kind of disappointing considering the First Amendment rights that the board has been uh, defending in the last few months. So just wanted to get a couple of the facts straight. You heard a lot of misinformation before I spoke. Just wanted to set that straight. Thanks. Good day, folks. My name is Art Larson of Doyle's Camp Township. I've been exposed to organized crime since I've been 12 years old, over 50 years. What I see going on is exactly what I saw since I've been 12 years old with what's going on with Nancy. I encountered this already in Abington when they came up with the No Place for Hate program by the Anti-Defamation League. The uh, Commissioner walked there, called me a Nazi, anti-Semite. I got the information on him. I got him voted out of office, okay? You look at this, what's going on? They mentioned the second mile. It was Penn State in Edmonton that they started that program for the Anti-Defamation League. The end result was Ray Garquardt was investigating it. He disappeared off the face of the earth. You had Graham Spanier convicted, okay? The Anti-Defamation League has no place in our community pushing their smut and corrupting our kids. This is what's going on. And we need to take them and hold them responsible. Each one of us, to some extent, has been exposed by it. Has anybody gone to Temple, the Fox School of Business, the Wharton School? Who set that up? The Annenberg Foundation. The same ones that set up the Annenberg School Reform Institute. Sir, where is this going? Okay, this is going. Why are we, why are we talking about the ADL? Okay, C because the ADL is the one pushing the hate laws in our schools and did this in front of the school board, in front of this community. I think it's important as people get up, we are not the school board. We no, are the correct. Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors. That is We're correct. We're trying to conduct township business. That so is correct. So if you have something to say about Doylestown Township right. and things that are going on within Doylestown Township, please take the podium. But if it's not to do with Doylestown Township. Oh, it has everything to do with Doylestown Township. Okay, then please finish. Okay. We need to become aware that there is a big problem in the, tri in the three counties of Bucks, Montgomery, and Philadelphia County with organized crime. And they're infiltrating and trying to take over our schools and take over our communities. And that's what's going on. I've seen it happen in other communities, and that's exactly what you're seeing that Nancy's facing. Okay. Any other comments? One more. A couple more. Hi, I'm Michelle Iyer. I am uh, from Doylestown. When, Doylestown, or when township residents bring something before this board, we're expected to be prepared, to be thorough, to be honest, trustworthy, and act in a way that's mindful of our neighbors. We obviously expect our elected officials to be an example of those qualities as well. Um, instead, Nancy has proved that she's not only incapable of these things, but she's not willing to listen to the calls of the people who have elected her and asking her to step down. She's not interested in our voices, which have been repeated again and again since her behavior and lack of judgment was exposed. Someone who spreads bigotry, racism, and stabs the teaching union in the back is the very last person I'd want educating me in anything or further ruling over anything that affects me in my township. Someone who targets the vulnerable with hate and continues to put a target on the backs of LGBTQ plus people is not a teacher or a leader. You were elected to, to represent every single person in this township fairly and equally. You've demonstrated clearly that you're not able to be unbiased and represent all people. Regarding your attacks on Marlene Prey in the Rainbow Room, first of all, everybody who's here that has mentioned the Rainbow Room and is confused, I would absolutely recommend reaching out. There's nothing to hide there. If you were truly interested in protecting children as you say you are, you would value the work done there to protect one of the most vulnerable groups in Doylestown and the world. The Rainbow Room provides a safe space for teens who are bullied by kids and adults alike, some kicked out by parents, some beaten, some at a high risk of suicide. Many others are just looking for somewhere to fit in and be loved and supported simply for who they are. 
Marlene has done that for so many in the community. She's a friend to me and to my kids, and there's no one I'd trust more. So I'll repeat the call that I made previously at another meeting. You should resign. You've embarrassed yourself, this township, and the board. You've made a spectacle of those same groups, and you continue to do so out of willful pride. You do not represent me, my family, or anyone that I know, and you certainly don't represent the Doylestown that I know and love. Thank you for your time. My name is Reverend Kevin Jago, and I am a, a resident of Doylestown Township. I'm deeply saddened to be here tonight. Uh, when we talk about division in the community, Nancy's actions seem to be the cause of much of it currently. And we, residents that are coming up and speaking and asking for your resignation, aren't silent because we know and have video evidence of a supervisor distributing lies about our community. And meetings like this are the result. Meetings that are sowed with division, anger, and community members hurting one another verbally. Working on community police partnerships, updating policies, recreational resources, and roads and the like is the good work of this body. I'm saddened and embarrassed that a public official would act in this manner. And I don't believe this issue will end and as long as Nancy remains a part of your board. Please, please resign so that we can move on. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to move on now to the rest of the agenda. Barb, I just want to say one thing okay. before, before we move on, because I listened to all of your public comment tonight, and there's a couple things that I want to clarify for those that um, Colonel Cox, your comments uh, calling our actions backstabbing and idiotic. This is black and white for me. The idea of the Rainbow Room, and I will be fully, I will fully admit, I hadn't even, had never heard of the Rainbow Room before this all took place. I did not know it existed in our community, and I did do the work to find out information about what the Rainbow Room is, okay? And, but for me, the issue is this, and I ask you this, all of you that stood up in defense of Nancy tonight, if one of the Democrats, Jen or Dan, a, a member of this board, abused their power as an employee of CB Cares to put propaganda through the Central Buck School District mail system, would you take issue with that? Because if you tell me no, I don't believe you. So the idea that we are getting into this tit for tat, I want every one of you to know that I will never be beholden to defend someone who did something wrong just because we share the same political party. And if you don't support me anymore, then that is fine. I am a conservative voice. For those, the person that said she's the conservative voice, I am a conservative voice. I will remain a conservative voice, but I am not gonna defend someone just because they are Republican. This is black and white, and if you do something wrong, when I was taught growing up, you take accountability for your actions. The lack of accountability by Nancy has resulted in a lack of trust by this entire board and many of our residents. We are not the school board. I will repeat that. If you have issues with the rainbow room, with policy, take it up at a school board meeting. Stop coming here to this meeting and talking about school board issues because we have a job to do at the township. We have a job that has become 100% more difficult because Nancy cannot put service before self. That's all. Ryan, you asked, you asked where my supporters were in January. You said, where are they? So I can get behind this and understand, and they're here now. Barbara, you said at the last meeting that the public comment was open and then you cut off Mr. Mackhouse and you cut off our other speakers. So I'm a little unclear. You know, I will always be a, a firewall for children. So Ryan, you can be as angry as you want. And our most vulnerable children is the reason I am doing this. All right, all right, so, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. The reason you, but, but Nancy, what you did was you abused your power. 
You acted unethically. You One walked second. into the central bus. Like, let's talk about the matter again. You walked into a building and abused your power as an employee of CB Cares and put a piece of paper through the system that you were not supposed to. Okay, let's, you wanna go there? All, we have people who use the Central Bucks School District mail all the time. There is no broken policy, there's no broken law. We have our, your school union president was using their CBSD email until recently. So you can say it's unethical. It is. And you can not agree with my opinion or my judgment. I will always be a firewall for children. I know, and you've said that many times. That. And I'm a firewall for children too, okay? I'm a firewall for okay, children great. too. I'm glad we agree then. Okay. No. No. Sir. No. You, you had. Mr. Cox, you're out of order. Mr. Cox, you're not recognized, Mr. Cox. If you want to say something, you have to come to the podium. Oh, sure. All right. Call me out for saying something. Call it out right, young lady. Uh, well, well, don't did point you, your hey, finger at me. Did you hear me say Republican Mr. or Democrat? Cox, Mr. I said Constitution of the United States. The First Amendment guarantees freedom of speech. But not freedom from your actions. You will be, it means you can say what you want. It doesn't mean you get to get off scot-free and then hide behind the First Amendment, sir. Okay. I have read the Constitution so, as enough, well. Enough. Not right. So publicly chastise her and I've let never it go. used this gavel before. Say so what? Please sit down. You told me to stand up if I wanted to speak. And you're now you're done. Huh? Please sit down. Fine. And guess what, Barbara Lyons? So are you. Okay. Sir, you have been asked to sit down and hold your tongue. Have a good one. Drive safe. All right. I, Let's get on the meeting agenda. First, first, I want to say one more thing. As, and following up on Ryan, I feel like I don't want to talk about this at all anymore. But here we are, how many meetings later, um, dealing with this again and again and again. And it, is, it started as a distraction. The very first meeting when this all came about, I said to you, if, it, if I had done something that raised scrutiny, public scrutiny, I would not be sitting here. I would have already resigned. Here we have hours and hours and hours of this because someone did something inappropriate. I don't care what's in Nancy's head. I don't care about you know, how she thinks or what she thinks. It's what she did. It, that, is the, that is the conduct that we're talking about. And what she did then became public because what she disseminated was false. And it was slanderous, actually. And the Courier Times, Ms. Dixon points out, debunked every single thing in that flyer as not factual, as, as false, basically. So you can say whatever you want. The reason why Ms. Mrs. Santacilia is not serving the public and serving the residents of Dawson Township and why she's no longer representative in any committees is because our residents do not want to work with her. They will not work with her. We hear time and time again, they don't want to work with her. So she has become persona non grata to many residents and a terrific distraction to this board and the work we have to do. That is our position. And I don't see that changing. So that's the last I want to say about it. And, and Ryan's correct. This is not the frickin' school board. You take those issues to the school board and let us do what we have to do in Doylestown Township. <laughs> and we're moving Hi. on now. Hi. Um, I, on I now. know very well this is not a, I, I, I don't know if you're speaking to me, Ms. Mannion, but I know this is the township meeting. I was just drawing a comparison as to what happens when um, some people want to get rid of someone, I know this is a township bill. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, and I'm allowed to come up here and speak to someone's character. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not saying you couldn't. You said circling the wagons. Just so you know, right. I campaigned for Nancy, so right. this wasn't a circling of the right. wagons for me. This was. I'm not. I wasn't talking okay. about you. I'm talking about people who send death threats and harass people to get them to resign. Uh, that's I don't what know I was talking about. 
Sure. You didn't know about John Gamble and the death threats? No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about this board again. Okay. This board. I know. I'm, I know this is the township, and he was a school board member. I'm just saying what happened when people want to get rid of someone and the lengths they will go to. All right. Next, we're moving on to the Barbara, I'd like, I'd like to make a comment. I, I understand we have a lot of work to do. Um, but there, there have been a few copy-paste emails that we've been getting from people from outside of the township, which is fine. Uh, we do listen to people that are outside the township. Um, but there were a couple points that were, you know, because it was a copy-paste, repeated over and over and over. One of them was that this was politically motivated, the accountability of Miss Santa Cecilia. This is obviously not politically motivated. Ryan has called for her to resign. Barbara has called for her to resign. We had a, a friend and maybe former friend of Nancy Santa Cecilia's, Marguerite Quinn, who served this, this region for, for many terms as state rep. It was a Republican come in and ask her to resign. This is not a political issue at all. Another misconception that I've been seeing a lot is, um, is that she's here to protect the children as a firewall. She did this as a firewall. And I just want to clarify, for those of you who haven't seen this flyer, if you were there to protect children, would you go and distribute this flyer to just school um, employees where the whole first page, all this in pink, was about pensions? Pensions, 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 peasers. No word about children on this front page at all. This was not about children ever. She's changing the narrative and it's confusing the situation and she does, and she's hiding behind children. She's hiding behind children who have been abused and I think it's despicable and shameful and one of the reasons why so many people refuse to work with her. All right, enough. All right. We're done. We're, We're done. done. We're done. All right, next you know, Jen, when we don't have teachers because our pensions aren't funded, then it does impact our kids. Nancy, we're done. All right, next meeting of this Board of Supervisors is Tuesday, April 19th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Um, we're meeting with the Ways and Means Committee for a budget work session, our first one on Tuesday, April 19th, at 5 p.m. Everyone is welcome to attend. And if you got potholes, don't call us. No, that's not true. Call the state. 1-800-FIXED-ROAD is, is their telephone number. But we do have township roads. If you're on a township road and you, need, you, need a, and you have a pothole, you can call us at 348-9915. And all the roads, if you don't know if you're a township road or state road, you can find it on our website. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the regular meeting of February 15, 2022. Has everyone had the opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. I'll second. I have a change. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Mackhouse's name was spelled incorrectly. It's M-A-C-K. Please let me know if I got th get this wrong. M-A-C-K-H-O-U-S-E, -E, one word. No. Nope. M-A-C-K-O-U-S-E. And he's in Buckingham Township, not Doylestown. Buckingham Township. OK, we're done. With, with that? With that correction, on our, our minutes. with that correction, uh, there's. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next item on the agenda. Oh, and the special meeting. Uh, minutes approval for the special meeting on March 10th, 2022. Is there a motion to approve the special meeting minutes? Motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With one abstention, Nancy wasn't there. Uh, next item on the agenda correspondence. We have none. Okay. Reports from the solicitor. I'll have something later in the agenda, Madam Chair. Thank you. Township Engineer. I uh, just want to give status that the uh, Bridge Point Park roof project was completed today. There are new gutters installed. Um, I just wanted to provide an update to the board. Okay, thank you. Anything uh, from the chief? Nothing. You, you had enough to say earlier, huh? <laughs> okay, Director of Operations, you have a few items on the agenda. A couple, a few quick items. Uh, first off is a 2020 turf maintenance bid. Uh, this is, uh, was a contract for uh, basically application of fertilizer um, to control weeds and things like that. Um, basically, a one bid for this. Um, so I, I spoke to Mr. Garten uh, after that discussion to the fact that we received one bid and uh, the discussion that it is professional services. Mr. Garten's um, uh, basically recommending or directed me to say that is professional services. 
or recommending the withdrawal to bid, which was received by D'Angelo Contracting Services, LLC of Hazleton, and that we will contract uh, as needed with uh, qualified vendors. Asking for the board's approval. Is there a motion to approve the turf maintenance recommendation to terminate that bid? Uh, I'll make a motion. A second. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Second item is our 2223 crushed stone aggregate and paving materials. On behalf of the uh, Doylestown Township, uh, we, we uh, join with the Bucks County Consortium of Local Governments and New Britain Township advertise this on our behalf for uh, all the municipalities. Bids were received on February 22nd. Seven bids were received for material. I'm asking, and I'm just going to read them off, that the board accept the pricing submitted by the following companies for us to purchase road material, paving, crushed stone, things like that for our uh, road program, parks and recreation, things like that for repairs. So Eureka Stone Quarry um, uh, of Chalfont, uh, Chalfont Materials, Division of Naysville Materials in Doylestown, PA, Hanson Aggregate, PMC Incorporated, Newtown, PA, Highway, uh, LLC of Saver, PA. Uh, I'm asking the board to accept their pricing so that we could uh, do our business. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Are you making a motion to approve the crushed stone aggregate in their aggregate? <laughs> yes, number two. All the materials that they're supplied, that they're willing to supply. All Everything. Yes. I'll second. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Took me a moment to sort that through my head. <laughs> I had to say it, sorry. Okay, next one. Uh, final one is our 22 lawn maintenance contract. Um, we have a one year, uh, the final of a th three year uh, contract with um, M&M &M Landscaping of Lansdale. Um, we have uh, basically they've submitted pricing with the increase of 6.6% .6 on the consumer price index, which is allowed by the contract. So I'm asking for the board's approval to accept their base bid for of $109,273.86 <coughs> for our 2022 mowing season for our fields, parks, rights of way, et cetera, et cetera. And that includes the, that includes the out, you know, adult, right? The adult has been removed from the contract because that basin is owned, maintained oh, okay. by a private entity. Okay, great. Motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank, thank you. you. Um, Township manager. Yes, I'd just like to um, advise the board and I shared um, Jackie Rowan's letter with all of you in your mailboxes uh, that she has submitted um, her letter to uh, retire effective March 31st of this year after 22 years with the township. Uh, Jackie has been a wonderful employee and has moved uh, up in the ranks from being our clerk typist initially um, to executive assistant. She's also served as our right to know officer and we will recognize Jackie on the 31st of March. And we, I know that um, the board wishes her well in her retirement. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, we do. All right, I'm a supervisor's comment, so I'm going to go first because I'm actually on the agenda as her. So, Karen Sweeney, can you come up to the podium? Please. So Karen has been our one of, well, she, Karen is the executive director of Parks and Recreation in Doylestown Township and has been so since, I understand, 1996, 1995. Anyway, I nominated her and so, and with the support of the staff in, um, here, nominated Karen for the uh, PRPS, that's a Pennsylvania Recreational Park Society Award, um, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, I guess, of, of people like you are nominated. And Karen is this year's um, recipient um, uh, getting the Distinguished Member Award in honor of Robert D. Griffith. So I wanted you to know that. I wanted to publicly thank you, have everybody else know how wonderful you are, because in my letter recommending you for this award, I'm just going to read, read a few things if it's okay with the board. Um, she started in 1995. We were in our second year of the community event called Oktoberfest. If you're around long enough, you remember what Oktoberfest was. Well, Karen took that event to three days, a three-day event, and we had that event every year, loved, beloved event until 2009 when the site was taken away for the parkway. So 
we had to stop the Oktoberfest. But the Oktoberfest model is what Karen took throughout the rest of the, uh, her performance here in Doylestown Township. It became a template, I wrote, for many other such events that occur in our township. Miss Sweeney's vast and creative set of skills, her passion and her commitment to our community, from organizing volunteers, partnering with community organizations, raising funds, developing proposals, finding talent, and coordinating with the staff, volunteers, and public works, the hands-on and boots-on details that these events entail are evident in all the projects she takes on. And the projects she has taken on, continual, um, the annual golf outing, the Kids Castle redo, um, the creation of the dog park, um, construction of the CNN Bank Amphitheater, and the continuation of the Thompson Performing Arts Series. I can go on, but I'm gonna just you know, finish with the uh, Township Parks and Recreation Open Space Comprehensive Plan, and now she's pretty much in charge of the new Recreation Center. She, um, in Doylestown Township, you've probably all heard me say this before, we believe um, our Parks and Rec Recreation Department serves a vital function in our community. We're committed to raising a healthier community. We believe that if we build and create opportunities for children to play, we will have less need for juvenile detention facilities. We believe if we provide our aging population programs that enhance and support their growth and continued need for community and camaraderie, our older res residents will continue to thrive. And I write some more. Ms. Ms. Sweeney embodies our vision and, con and contributes her own. Ms. Sweeney, together with Doylestown Township, have created and maintained one of the most admired parks and recreation programs in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. On a personal note, I write, having worked with Ms. Sweeney for 26 years, I know her to be imbued with the highest integrity. She is kind, patient, non-judgmental, and a, a delight to be around. Her work ethic, skills, intelligence, and commitment are unparalleled and proved in the result. Ms. Sweeney has provided our residents with the best parks and recreation programs one can find anywhere. Yes, she is that good. Now I wrote some more stuff, but I'm not gonna read any more. So Karen, we are so proud of you. We're so proud of how you represented um, Doylestown Township throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we're very, very lucky to have you directing our parks and recreation. Well, Barbara's letter said it all, but there was an application that had to go with it. And um, I worked on the application with Judy Sturm Goldstein and Barbara to make sure that you won this award because <laughs> you are so deserving. So these are for you from all Thank of you. us. Thank, Thank you. you. Congrats. And I can't wait to be there to well, see who did the work. I, I hope. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I, you. You're only as good as as the people that teach you, light the fire, set you on the path, and help you along the way. I'm very humbled. I'm very honored and privileged to serve the residents of Doylestown Township in this board. Well deserved. It really is a huge award, so. Thank you, Karen. We like winning awards, and you <laughs> did it again for us. Okay, um, other supervisors. Um, Dan, do you have anything? Yeah, I'd like to start. Um, I know it's been mentioned already, but thanking uh, the hard work that our police department did under Chief Logan, Lieutenant Ziegler, uh, getting our accreditation, huge step forward for us, and also uh, the work Sergeant Whiteside and Lieutenant Ziegler have done uh, for us, especially uh, the outreach event that we had last year, which I thought was one of our uh, most well-attended events we had uh, last summer. Uh, besides that, I hate to bring us back to it, but since everybody else had their turn, uh, I do just want to say a few things. As I mentioned, Nancy is well within her rights to use her First Amendment to spread whatever message she wants. That is not, that does not mean you're Reactions to that are protected. We have had several residents come up and tell us that they are unable to work with you. We've had several volunteers tell us that they are unable to work with you. That hurts the township and the way we function. So, of course, you are welcome to say that. Uh, and all of, and I want to thank everyone who came to speak. 
uh, from across Central Bucks. Uh, unlike some other municipalities, we do not have a rule in place that you must be of the township to speak. Uh, so thank you for sharing your thoughts on how to run our township. And the, um, the last piece I just want to bring up, as Ryan alluded to, this is not the school board. I am getting really tired of hearing about the school board's issues uh, as a supervisor. I have a six-year-old child. I hear about it enough. Uh, in that capacity, we have no impact on what the Central Buck School Board does. And I am just, the whole stuff with CB Cares and Dr. Ort and who covered up what, it is not township business. The one thing I will say about Dr. Ort, because we received, as Jen mentioned, we received several emails talking that alluded to things like grooming of children by groups like the Rainbow Room or other unnamed entities. I was a member of the Catholic Church, history of uh, child molestation. I am proud that I received my Eagle Scout from the Boy Scouts of America, but again, a group with a history of molestation. I went to Penn State, as we heard tonight, also associated with that, and I went to CB West, where I was in a musical taught by Dr. Ord. So I am well aware of the continuing pattern we've seen over the years of child molestation charges being just moved to another target-rich environment. And let me tell you something, from my perspective, I can promise you, if I see something like that, there's one thing I have learned. You say something right away when you see it. And to, to hear otherwise that we might be trying to, to protect these powerful entities uh, when most, all of us have had kids in the school district or currently in the school district is ridiculous and I'm frankly tired of hearing about it, but I felt like it had to be addressed. Thank you. Okay. Ryan, do you have anything? Uh, just one update. I had my first dog park meeting as the liaison to the dog park committee and um, great meeting. Uh, I learned a lot and I will say that if you are a uh, owner of a four-legged friend, I encourage you to learn more about the dog park and um, all that is going on, that spring is coming. Um, and so we wanna be outside and, and um, the dog park has a lot of different uh, um, initiatives and um, I encourage you to learn about it, great training. So um, sign up for the dog park because it's, uh, I, I loved my first meeting. I thank Kathy Brown, who's the, the chair of the dog park committee. And it was, um, it was awesome learning so much more about it and the cool things to come, but I won't talk about that right now. Okay, thanks. Um, Nancy, do you have anything? Sure. Um, again, Chief and uh, Lieutenant Ziegler, thank you for your steadfast leadership um, in getting the accreditation at Doylestown. I know when you were first talking about it, you were a little nervous and just thrilled that you were able to accomplish that. Um, also happy to see that the Veterans Committee um, is in progress. Um, it was a resolution I brought to the board. Um, Ryan is now going to be the liaison to that. Um, I know she will bring wonderful leadership and i um, grateful after hearing some of the interviews of the opportunities um, that we're going to be able to finally serve our residents and families and parents. So thank you. Jen? Um, so the EAC is such a busy uh, committee, the Environmental Advisory Council. Very, very busy um, organization and it is a wonderful thing being a liaison on it. Um, but one of the complications is there's so many events. And uh, so I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna direct you to the webpage to find out all the amazing events that are going on with the EAC um, these days. Um, I also want to um, thank Chief Logan and the Doylestown Township Police and um, Lieutenant Ziegler for the accreditation and all the hard work that they put into it. It really does mean a lot um, to have this accreditation and, and um, I understand how much work it was and I, I thank them very much and congratulate Sergeant Whiteside on her accomplishments as well. Um, I, did, um, I did also want to uh, congratulate Karen Sweeney for her recognition. She really, really deserves it. And um, she's been a wonderful person to work with. So um, I think that's about all I have. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is a public hearing regarding the amendment to the zoning ordinance um, 
use ancil ancillary uses, facilities, and events permitted on colleges and universities. Um, the board, I'm sorry, the board will recall that we had a presentation from the folks at Terrain who uh, were desirous of taking the existing farm market on Lower State Road and, and transforming it into a new location for the similar purposes, but also expanding the uses and concepts that that facility would be made use of. However, in addition to that, they also made a presentation to the Planning Commission and also the I think from my recollection of those meetings, the residents of that area were very enthusiastic about what was proposed by Terrain. In any event, the staff worked on an, an ordinance which would amend the Doylestown Township Zoning Ordinance so as to permit certain ancillary uses to university, to the college and university, which basically incorporated the suggestions of what Terrain would like to do on the site. Board reviewed that previously. You authorized the advertisement of it. Uh, it has been duly advertised in the Intelligencer. A copy's been provided to the Bucks County Law Library. A copy's been provided to the Bucks County Planning Commission, to your Planning Commission. And I believe at the last board meeting, we discussed the comments from the Bucks County Planning Commission, and you chose not to make any adjustments to the proposed ordinance. In any event, as it is a public hearing, you need to solicit any comments from the public before you consider adopting the ordinance. Okay, so be it. So are there any comments from the public with regard to this amending uh, amendment to the zoning ordinance allowing for ancillary, ancillary uses to colleges and universities in Doylestown Township? Please take the podium. Can, you, can we have your name again, please? I'm yeah, sorry. the name is Art Larson, Doylestown. Can you specify the ancillary usage? Certainly, it is. Give me a moment. Judy's, Judy has it, if you want. Judy, go ahead, Judy. Right here. So they would be ancillary uses, including retail uh, as part of the university use, food service, festivals, and there are requirements specified for each type of the use. Indoor banquet facilities, parking, and then there are some acreage. So they would be all uses that would be ancillary to the university use, or college university use, affiliated with in some way with an agreement with, between the college and approved by the township. Okay. Does that answer your question? Any other questions, comments, anything from the board? All right, um, ready we to move. We need a motion, motion for that. To yes. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is um, Tax Collection Committee representatives, delegate. You saw the resolution prepared by the, the manager. Is there a motion to approve the delegates? Voting delegate Stephanie Mason, first alternate voting delegate Ken Wallace, second alternate voting delegate Jen Jennifer Herring. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Judy. Good night. All right. All in favor? We, we already did that. that. Oh. Thank you. Sorry, I was <laughs> saying goodbye to Judy. All right. I lost track. Okay. Next time on the agenda is a request to waive the fees for the 1K, 3K, Suri run. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, the 457 deferred compensation plans from Bernie Welk, um, who recommend a change in the handling of the compensation plan. Uh, do we need a this is a, These are plans which employees yeah. can opt into, but there's not part of your official. Right. Do we need a motion for this? I don't know. We need an we acknowledgement do. so that need an I acknowledgement. can. Okay. In we my, because I, I have to go online to do the paperwork. You know, it's all electronic now. Words aware. So, you just want to make sure that you acknowledge that I'm going to do that. You can do that. So acknowledged. Okay. The next item on the agenda is payment to the Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority, Pebble Ridge, Wood Ridge, and vicinity area. Request number thirty-four. Anyone have a question? Nope. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. Dan should. Uh, I'll second it. Okay. It's fine. We're, we're getting close. <laughs> All right. First by Ryan, second by Dan. 
Third by Jen. Third by Jen. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Zoning hearing board applications. First one is 317 Bunker Hollow Road. Recommendation is to leave actually all of them if you want to do them as a group, but all of them to the zoning hearing board. Okay, that's fine. So that would be 95 Rickard Road, 500 North Shady Retreat Road, and 91 Rogers Road. All of those applications are going to the zoning hearing board. Okay. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, finally. Um, the bills list of March 15th, 2022, sent to you electronically. Here's a motion to approve it. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Treasurer's report from March 15th, 2022. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The next meeting of this board is Tuesday, April 19th at 7 p.m. We're going to meet with a Ways and Means Committee for a budget work session on uh, uh, Tuesday, April 19th at 5 p.m. And if you got potholes for state roads, call 1-800-FIX-ROAD. And for township roads, call 348-9915. And if you need to know whether you're on a township road or a state road, um, there's all the, all the roads are listed on our website. Okay, we are done tonight, everyone. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. There are documents.